everybody. Welcome to the Abroaders Travel Podcast, your weekly meetup with thousands of entrepreneurs, hustlers, creators, nomads, ninjas, wanderers, and world changers, all seeking to build the skills and connections to live a life without borders. If you want to learn more about what we do or download our entire podcast archive, check out the website, abroaders.com. Happy Wednesday morning and welcome to another episode of the Abroaders Podcast. I am AJ, checking in from Barcelona, Spain. Today's episode, we're going to touch on which credit cards to use when you are booking travel. In the news and updates, we've got a free airport Wi-Fi promotion, some transfer bonuses that may be of value to you, an interesting development with American Airlines and their credit cards, and a couple other odds and ends. Show notes for today's episode can be found at abroaders.com slash which card. So you probably all know what Boingo Wi-Fi is, and there's currently a promotion through Amazon Underground that will give you six months for free. This is only good for new accounts. This is kind of funky, but uh, you must initiate this from an Android phone. So that means if you have an iPhone, you cannot do this. And then you'll, like I said, you'll have uh, free Wi-Fi for six months. Uh, You know, free Wi-Fi is becoming more common at airports, but this is still a nice thing to have in your back pocket for those airports that you know, limit the speed of the Wi-Fi you get when it's free, or they limit it to, you know, like like 30 minutes. That was the case for me when I was in Casablanca, and I kind of got uh, blindsided by that because I had some work I had to do. I looked up and saw the airport had Wi-Fi, but it was only for 30 minutes. So definite first world problem, but if you've got an Android phone or access one, uh, this is a decent opportunity to get six months for free of Boingo Wi-Fi. Next piece is the British Airways AARP discount. I believe Eric and I touched on this a week or two ago, but just to give you guys a quick overview um, on round trips that originate from the United States, you can get 65, or excuse me, it was 65. Now you're going to get $100 off on economy tickets. Um, You get up to $400 off for business class tickets. So if you are an AARP member, Uh, There are new discounts for you. And like I said, these are only good for transatlantic flights, round trips that originate in the United States. And you got to book through the AARP British Airways portal. Um, And and as far as this deal goes, it must be booked by July 31st. And you've got to fly by March 31st. So any AAR people out there, um, worth, worth worth giving a look at least. Next piece is that transfer bonus we're talking about. So right now, Aeroplan has a promotion where you can convert your hotel points to Aeroplan points, and you will get a bonus for this. And the bonus is up to 55,000 points. So that's that's if you transfer 200,000 plus hotel points. It's, it's a tiered bonus starting at 500 Aeroplan miles. And it goes all the way up to fifty five thousand miles. Uh, it's a lot of the a lot of the uh, hotel partners, or excuse me, a lot of the hotel programs are are participating in this. So SPG, Marriott, Hilton, Wyndham, uh, a lot of them. So uh, I guess the key takeaways here are uh, Aeroplan miles are not as valuable as they used to be. But uh, if you're if you're a bit more advanced, or if you have an understanding of of airlines and partners and, and routing rules. There is some value to be had here. Uh, An example would be with Aeroplan, you can do a round trip uh, in business class from the U.S. to Europe for 110,000 points, which is not great, but considering this bonus, uh, it's pretty good because 110,000 points for a round trip in business is is kind of par for the course with the the United States-based airlines, which, you know, uh, American United, Delta might be a little bit more. Uh, but the key thing here to understand and remember is that if you want to really get your value, you've got to book on an airline that Air Canada does not impose fuel surcharges. So this would be like Brussels, Turkish, Swiss, or United, because an award ticket can end up being pretty expensive if you get hit with those uh, fuel surcharges. And another nice thing about this is, for example, with that round trip, uh, you can you can get two stopovers, so that's another nice thing to play with the routing. So you essentially get some free free connecting flights, you know, fly into one place in in Europe, fly out of another place. Uh, so definitely something to consider if you've got a lot of hotel points and you don't know what to do with them. Uh, you know, like like the buying miles promotions, don't just move points because there's a promotion going on. But if you if you look something up and you have a, an actual use for uh, for transferring your hotel points to Aeroplan for for a flight you've got in mind, this is definitely something to consider. Like I 
said, it's tiered bonuses. Um, a couple other examples, if you, you know, transfer 20,000 to 50,000 points, you get 4,000 bonus points all the way up to 55,000 points. And a reminder for people with SPG points, you do get the SPG bonus as well. So transfer 20,000 points to Aeroplan, you're going to actually get 25,000 points plus another 4,000 points because of that tiered bonus structure. This next piece is what seems to be really good news with American Airlines. So a lot of a lot of you people know that American Airlines has co-branded credit cards with Citibank, which will allow you to earn AA advantage points when you, you know, use a credit card and buy things and, and they typically come with pretty nice sign up bonuses. Uh, so for those of you that remember, American Airlines and US Airways merged and US Airways used to have credit cards with Barclays. And so now American Airlines has just announced that they're going to have credit cards with both City and Barclays. So that's really good for all of us because we can imagine that that's going to create some competition as far as the sign-up bonuses and the card benefits go. And also, we should be able to double dip on those sign-up bonuses so you can get the Barclay card and the City card. We'll have to see exactly which which route they go. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. With what American Airlines said and what I've read, uh, thanks to One Mile at a Time, is that City is going to continue to be able to market the the credit cards you know online on the American Airlines website via email. And it looks like Barclays is going to be in airports and doing in-flight promotions. This is supposed to begin in 2017. So we will keep you updated on what we find out about this, but the bottom line is this looks really good. There's going to be competition between Barclay and City to acquire card users, and they're going to give out sign-up bonuses for that, and we'll see some competition, which will be really good. Um, I'm not sure of any other instances where, where one airline has worked with two banks, but uh, apparently Amer- American is going to do this, so this is, uh, this is good for all of us. So lots of you probably know what's going on in, in Turkey right now. Uh, so the Istanbul airport's closed because of, uh, you know, what what seems to be a military coup attempt. Uh, and we usually don't talk about political stuff here, but for for the adventure and the traveler, I've got a pretty interesting blog post. I just want to alert you about that. We'll toss in the show notes. One of one of our friends, he's a friend of Eric and I. Uh, we've had him on the show before, Scott Brills. He's actually in Istanbul when all this shit was going down, and he has a really interesting blog post. He was there, and he he chronicles, you know. Through his eyes, every, everything that went down, he's got some photos, got some really crazy audio. I'm happy the guy's alive. It sounded like people were like shooting at him, and it sounded like bombs going off, which ended up actually being, I believe, sonic booms from the from the fighter jets. But if you were curious to get a get a first hand account of what happened in Turkey, and in, in particular Istanbul with the coup, uh, it's a really interesting and just open and honest blog post. Uh, Scott doesn't really sympathize with any political party there. He just kind of. You know, states I was I was in Istanbul, and here here's what happened. So if you're if you're into that, it's really interesting. We'll link to that in the show notes, which once again can be found at abrados.com slash which card. That is all for this week's news and updates. Now we're going to get into the core content, which we're going to talk about. You know, some of the benefits of paying with a particular credit card when you are paying for taxes and fees uh, when you book an award flight, or even just just buying travel. Uh, most cards. Have some type of some type of bonus for travel. All, pretty much every travel card, all the airline cards, uh, is pretty standard to give two x points when purchasing. You know something with the airline, you've got a United card and you buy a United flight, you get two x purchases. But uh, there's there are some there are some rules that you may not be aware of, and there may be some opportunities you're not aware of. And before we get into this, just remember to be conscious of the fact that for most of us. Regular spending isn't the way that we quickly get enough points to book travel. It's sign-up bonuses that, that gets us there that fast. That being said, strategic spending and using the right card can help us accelerate things and top up our points balances. Uh, but, you know, as far as the small purchases go, it's it's not really necessary to, to stress about which card to use because, you know, if you're buying something for $50, even with a 5x, you know, points on that purchase, we're talking about 250 points, so just not worth the time. But... If you're booking travel for yourself or for your family, uh, it can definitely can definitely make a difference. So you should uh, be conscious if you're making you know uh, booking travel for for multiple people, especially if we're talking about flights and accommodation. So to start it off, we're going to do a quick rundown of cards and when you book travel with them, the bonuses you get. Uh, I guess starting off is the the major U.S. based airlines. We can assume two x points when purchasing with that airline. So that's United, Delta. American Airlines and Southwest. Um, 
a lot of you people have the Amex Gold card, and per, the, both the personal and the business card receives three X points. So you spend a dollar on travel, you get three points per dollar spent. Um, but this is only when you purchase directly with the airline, and it's key to know that. So if you book on a third party website with your Amex Gold, you're not going to get the three X points. You need to do it directly with the airline. So um, you know, it's got to be through American Airlines website or through Delta's website or United's website. But if you go to Expedia or, you know, another, you know, third party, uh, you know, broker for, for flights, you are not going to get that. Um, the City Prestige and Premier Card receives 3X as well on travel and hotel purchases. And you can book through third party websites. So you could go ahead and, and get something through booking.com or through Expedia and re- receive your 3X bonus. The Chase Sapphire. That's 2x on travel. The Hilton Honors Visa Reserve give you, gives you 5x points on travel purchases. But that, that right there sounds really nice, but that can be a little bit of a trap. We've got to remember that um, you know, the points are only, only as good as you know, what you can actually do with them. And unless you're you know, really keen on, on racking up Hilton points and using them, uh, like, it's, not a, it's not a reason to book travel through that card. So uh, I guess I should have mentioned before is, you know, keep, keep in mind, what are your points balances? Where do you travel? Which points do you typically value the most? And it's worth it to get 2x points on points you value over 5x points on, you know, shit that you're just never going to use. So right there, we just talked about, you know, the front end of things when you buy, when you buy travel with a credit card, how many points you're in. But there's also a couple other things to consider with a couple credit cards, and that's on the back end of things. So for example, with Americans credit card, so the City Platinum and the Aviator card, when you book travel, you get a rebate on miles. So that's something that the cards advertise. Uh, you know, they say, you know, 10% miles back, 10% rebate on, you know, it, it's capped, but it's 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 worthwhile, you know, up to like 100,000 points or something like that. But it's really important to remember, and this may seem like common sense, but you do not get that deal unless you book with a card. Having that credit card does not entitle you to anything. The The way the deal goes is with, for example, the Aviator card, which used to be the, the US Airways card that got switched over to American Airlines, the Aviator Red card a lot of you guys have. All because that card has that benefit of getting 10% points back when you book award travel with American Airlines. It doesn't mean you just get that. You have to use that card. And that's something to be really conscious of also with uh, with all, all credit card bonuses. You know, For example, the Chase Sapphire card. It's a great just general daily driver travel card. But you don't get any of those. You don't get those benefits unless you book travel through things. So if you if you book travel with your Chase Sapphire card, then you're entitled to all the travel benefits you go. It's, it doesn't always work out that way that you need to use the credit card to be entitled to a particular benefit. But as far as travel stuff goes, it's pretty pretty safe way to play it. Is just you know you're not going to get the benefits unless you use the card. So that's another reason it's important to be conscious of which card you use. I also know that this stuff can be can be pretty dense and difficult to consume. So I also do want to let you know that uh, thanks to Eric, we've got a nice spreadsheet we're going to also share in the show notes that compares card benefits as far as booking goes. So travel protection, luggage, uh, no foreign transaction fees. So if you check out the show notes at abrados.com slash which card, you can take a look at that. And I'm uh, I'm looking at it right now. It's, it's pretty slick. So, you know, no foreign transaction freeze, free check luggage, lost baggage protection, car insurance, trip cancellation. You can kind of just go down. Uh, we've got the main credit cards in here that uh, you guys may have or that we may have recommended our clients. And you can take a look at which which things matter to you when you travel and you can figure out uh, which which card will entitle you to the benefits you want. And then you can make sure that you use that card when you're booking travel. So to wrap things up and bring things full circle, here's here's the key takeaways as far as figuring out which card to use. So uh, cards are good at advertising their benefits. Most likely, other cards offer something similar to the card that you have that you may think is really good. So don't fall in love with one card because they tell you it's great or they tell you that you get 2x points because uh, most cards do something similar. And there's a good chance that your card is a card that does not earn points that are really worth all that much. Uh, the next thing is if you don't know which card to use, keep it simple. If you're happy with the benefits of a card you use for travel and you understand these benefits, just keep with that card. That's so much better than uh, thinking you're getting something and it ends up that you actually aren't you know, entitled to the benefits that you thought. So if you're happy with stuff and you don't care to really look into it, just continue to be happy with that card. Now, as far as which card to earn points, 
if you aren't sure or you're just in the beginning with points and miles, go after the type of point that you think is most valuable or say, you know, the type of point that you have the most of or you're close to getting a flight. For example, you've got, I don't know, uh, 20, 25,000 American Airlines miles and let's say you, you're looking to book a one-way to Europe, so you need 30,000 points in economy class. Uh, just go ahead and toss your cards on on your you know earn AA points. There's there's no there's no reason to try to get cute and get five x points on I don't know some other currency that will leave you with you know fifteen hundred points of that and you're still short on American. So do keep in mind that the ultimate goal of this is to get on a flight using your points. So it's not to just accumulate a bunch of different types of points and and get great you know multipliers and five x. Just it's about getting the damn flight. So uh, if you don't have enough points for a flight, but you've got a fair amount of points, just continue to chip away until you get your flight. And then lastly, remember that you need to book travel with the cards uh, that you're thinking about taking advantage of the benefits. So uh, for example, you know, I believe the Chase Sapphire card has some trip cancellation stuff. If you don't book travel with that card, you cannot call up Chase and tell them that you'd like to cancel stuff for free um, because the whole idea is that you're using their product and they're making money when you use it. So uh, remember, if you if you get your eyes set on a benefit of card, most likely you need to book travel with that card to be entitled to that. So that's all we've got here. I hope that that was helpful. Feel free to share any of your stories or anything that I missed about benefits and strategies for booking travel. Uh, there's no there's no one size fits all thing. You know the you can obviously get a bigger return and you can get more points if you spend more time really optimizing it and looking through stuff and switching which cards you use. But for a lot of people, that's not worth it. So. Find what works for you. Feel free to share. Let us know what works for you. Like I said, show notes for today's episode are at abroaders.com slash which card. Safe travels. Today's track is a throwback. It is from Slightly Stupid, and the track is Kali Man. Hey, Broaders, don't be shy. Hop over to the website and join our email list for exclusive travel hacking content. If you like what we're up to, the best way you can support the show is by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. Lastly, we would love to hear from you, so send your show feedback to Eric or AJ at Broaders.com. We will see you next week. On any road to life, yes, it goes up and down. It doesn't really matter if some gets the music